I, Mrs. Rutuja Gadge, Assistant Professor from Department of Electrical Engineering, AISSMS Institute of Information Technology, will be discussing bisection method. Let's start with the theory of bisection method. This method is also called as method of halves or Bolenzo method. It comes under the category of bracketed methods. and it is based on intermediate value theorem right. now what does this theorem states this theorem states that uh, any function is continuous if any function is continuous in the interval a comma b and if f of a and f of b are of opposite sign then there exists at least one root between a and b this is the theorem right now, in our case, what we are going to do is, for definiteness, we are going to take f of a. This is your point a. These are the points a, comma, f of a. This is b. So, this is b, comma, f of b. Right? We are going to take f of a as negative. So, I am writing for definiteness, I am taking f of a as negative. Right? and f of b as positive right so the condition which is given by intermediate value theorem that if a function is continuous in the interval a comma b and f of a and f of b are of opposite sign then there exists at least one root in the interval a comma b so you can see that we can say that this is the root of the equation where the function cuts the x axis right so then how do you find out the first approximation to the root by bisection method? We find out c is equal to c is equal to 1 upon 2 a plus b. c is equal to 1 upon 2 a plus b. And if your f of c is equal to 0, then you say that c is the root of root of f of x is equal to 0 right otherwise you say that otherwise you say that root lies root lies either between either between c and a or c and b right now we have to check. So it depends upon the value of f of c. We have to see whether f of c is positive or f of c is negative. Right? We have to check. Right? Now in our case, suppose I take this is my um, the diagram which I've shown over here for explanation. A, B is the interval. If I say that C is my point over here, C is my point over here. Right? So, if you see, these are the coordinates over here, c, comma, f of c. So, f of c in my case in this example or the explanation which I am giving is what? f of c is what? f of c is become as what? Positive. Right? It has become as what? Positive. So, for the above case, f of c is positive. Right? So, what I am going to do is, I will check whether f of c into f of a is less than 0 or f of c into f of b is less than 0. Right? So, in our case, we have seen that f of a was negative, f of b was positive and f of c is also what? Positive. Right? So, I will say that the root lies or the new interval is going to become root lies root lies in the interval in the interval a comma c right so what we are going to do is now our next approximation our next approximation is going to become equal to next approximation is going to become equal to d is equal to a plus c by 2 a plus c by 2 right then next what I do is, once I get d is equal to a plus c by 2, I find out f of d. What I do is, I find out f of d. Then I check 
whether f of d into f of a is less than 0 or f of d into f of c is less than 0. Whichever get condition gets satisfied, suppose if I say that the above condition gets satisfied, f of d into f of a is less than 0, then my next approximation e will become equal to d plus a by 2, right, d plus a by 2. So, what am I doing is, what am I doing is, this is my interval a, b. In the first case, I am dividing the interval into half. So, I have done it as what? a, c. In the next case, again I am dividing the interval into half. So, it is going to be a, d. Then again I am going to divide it. So, I am keeping on dividing the interval into half, half, half. That is why this method is called as what? Method of halves, right? Then what you do is, so in the first interval, in the first interval, in the first interval or the first approximation or the first iteration, I should say, not interval, first iteration, the interval is divided into, interval is divided into half, right? In the next iteration, next iteration, it is divided into still further half. So, the interval becomes as what? The interval is what? Becomes still half than that. So, it becomes 2 raised to, right? So, it becomes what? 1 fourth. So, if I keep on doing this, right? What is my interval? My interval is B minus A because I have taken the approximations as what? Interval as what? A, B. So, this is my interval A, B. So, in the first, it was divided into half. Right? In the second, it was divided into one fourth. So, at the end of nth iteration, nth iteration, it is going to become as what? B minus A upon 2 raised to n. It is going to become as what? B minus A upon 2 raised to n. So, this is going to become the length of my interval after n iterations. Right? How long do you continue this process of finding out the approximation? As I told you, it depends upon two factors. Either you are given the number of iterations or you are given the permissible error or you are given the permissible error, right. I will directly give you the formula for finding out the number of iterations if the permissible error is given. So, you can use the formula n is greater than or equal to log of b minus a minus log of epsilon upon log of 2 where this epsilon stands for the permissible error or you can continue up to the number of iterations or the next part is you get the answer, you get the answer same for two consecutive iterations. Right? So, the main part which you have to remember for bisection method is that Always you have to take, if you have interval a, b, your next approximation c will be equal to 1 upon 2 a plus b and to get the next approximation you have to check whether f of c into f of a is less than 0 or f of c into f of b is less than 0. Thank you.